Hi, I'm Julia from Irish Phil, and I'm going to present the single-use pla packaging problem. I'm going to focus in this presentation on plastic, since it is one of the most frequent used packagings and one of the most dangerous. Has it ever happened to you to walk out of your favorite grocery store without any plastic? It is still quite difficult to make this happen, unfortunately. But why was plastic invented in the first place? Here you can see two pictures, a piano and billiard balls. What do they have in common? Well, in the fire year of 1863 in America, those two objects were produced with the material of ivory a material that was getting rarer and rarer. So some producers of billiard balls gave the chance of winning $10,000 to anyone who could come up with a more convenient material. So the inventor John Wesley Hyatt was inspired and plastic was born. Now the situation is getting out of control. Here you can see the graph of the global annual plastic production in million metric tons. In 2015, 381 million metric tons were produced. This is a number compared to 65 times as heavy as the Great Pyramid of Giza. How does Europe handle the situation? Here you can see two graphs that describe the plastic demand in Europe. The dimension of this demand is 50.7 million tons. And on the second place of, co of the country that demands plastic is Italy with 13.8%. And almost half of the whole pro plastic production goes into packaging, mostly single-use packaging. Once this plastic is used, where does it end up? Here you can see, again, two graphs on a worldwide scale. 19% of the plastic waste ends up in Europe and 50% to Asia, 29% to China. Of the whole plastic production worldwide, 78%, 78 million tons. Almost half goes to landfill, which is for 40%. Only 14% is being collected to be recycled. And guess what? Only 2% is actually recycled. Recycling, however, is not enough to solve this problem. My teammate Sebastian is going to talk about this now. Thank you, Julia. And as you said, uh, yes, recycling is not enough indeed. There are many points that make this process ineffective but let's see some of them. So it is a high energy consumption process. Energy is both wasted in the dismantling of the product as well as in the remanufacturing of it. Secondly, it is a process that takes up a lot of virgin material to make recycled plastic, that is by law. Last but not least, also a psychological fact. Uh, the Positive emotions associated with recycling most of the times overpower the negative emotion associated with wasting. But that's even more. Have you ever thought how much would you save by reusing your lunch boxes over and over again? Well, as Swiss startup did, so you don't have to, and the results are quite impressive. Here we can see how the environmental impact of these lunch boxes changes in respect to the number of their usages. We can clearly see that the single-use boxes impact is steady, doesn't change, whether the impact of the reusable one decreases exponentially, even if the impact at first is nearly double as the single-use solution. But this does not answer the initial question, doesn't it? Well, we can argue that if we change the definition of the y-axis with the cost, the graph would be very similar, saving you after only 10 usages nearly 90% of the cost compared to a single-use solution. The question is now, how or can we extend this idea not only to lunch boxes? 
Well, actually yes, and let's find out how. The number of zero packaging stores is increasing with a high rate in the world right now. But the debate is still open whether this solution is good or not for the environment. The variables at stake are countless and therefore it is difficult to have even a rough estimate of the impact of this philosophy. Nevertheless, we found a very good overview on the subject in a 2016 study done by a Swedish researcher, Wilhelm. In the paper, the researcher assessed all the packaging usage in, from the production to the purchase of a product in a conventional scenario and compared it with the life cycle in a package-free scenario. The results that can be shown also here has been produced from the investigation of the life cycle of the oath. There are three bars pattern in this graph and each correspond to a different case scenario studied. The first one, the, the package-free baseline, was used and it is basically that the oat is distributed via big reusable containers and the buyer will take the oat in a paper bag in a paper bag at the store. The second bar, the paper bag will be only filled a half and the last is considered the best case scenario where the consumer brings its own reusable jar from house and it refills it up to an infinity amount of times. Two main things should be in inter of interest in this graph. So the firstly, in any case a package free solution will outperform the conventional scenario in nearly all of the environmental impact categories that has been considered. Secondly, the optimization of the final customer packaging is responsible for the greatest change in the overall impact. So, but is it just this easy? In reality, the impact changes from food to food, from the food type, from its perishability and many other factors. In the same research, we can also see the impact of another food, the rapeseed oil. Even for this product, the effect cases were studied and are represented by each individual bar pattern. What should be noted from this graph is that the environmental impact is less than the previous one. A good explanation would be that the oil is a food that needs more attention and is more difficult to handle than any other dry food. Therefore, it requires more attention during the life cycle. That means also more cost and more uh, impact. Therefore, what the author suggests is to develop better usable packaging systems that minimizes the negative impact for different types of foods and also asserts that there is a lot of room for improvement. Reusing and refilling is a very complicated subject but it turns out it is also an efficient solution and maybe one day become the standard. So at iRefill, we have our own interpretation of the three R's that are very well known to the sustainability community. They are reduce, reuse and refill. Our aim is to create a thriving community based on the zero packaging and zero waste philosophy in order to make this abstract idea into an everyday reality. So, if you felt inspired by this presentation, have a look at our website where you can find our mission and more information about us. We also have our blog that we update weekly. Don't forget also to check out our social media platform, in which you can be updated on any news from us. Moreover, if you have any question, doubt, suggestion, Please write us an email at info at Thank you for your time.